How to love yourself when the whole world feels like it's against you. Good morning, my friends. I hope you're doing well on this chilly morning here in Ohio. I'm sitting here drinking a lovely mug of coffee. <laughs> in the house because the deck is cold. <laughs> I hope you're, you're doing well. I really do. How to love yourself when the whole world feels against you. The interesting thing about this question is it itself is a conundrum. And I don't mean a conundrum in the sense that it's just a mystery or, or it's a problem we must solve. There, there is, within the question itself, a, a schism between the, the life you want to experience and the life you currently are experiencing. And it's the schism of not feeling your own divinity. And what I mean by that is our present moment is the only moment we're conscious. It's the only moment we have thought, word, and deed. It's the only moment we create. The past is just a collection of present moment memories. The future is just potential waiting for your belief. But there's nothing there and there's nothing behind you either. It's, it's right here and right now in the present moment is your creative moment. And to ask how do I love myself is the direct declaration that you don't. And the key to solving this conundrum is to step into your powers, to step into your divinity, and simply say, I am loving myself. And it sounds <laughs> like a ridiculous thing, but you know, 85 to 90% of your day, you're in your subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is nothing but uh, an underlying belief of past experiences. But when you step into the role of being the creator of your life, the past experiences no longer matter. They're moot. And the reason they're moot is because this is the moment of creation. That's just a file drawer. The past is just a file drawer of memories. But each moment is a moment of choice. How do I love myself when the world seems against me? There's two elements to this. First of all, breaking free of the idea of how. Because even asking how means you're declaring it's not now. The other part is, I feel like the whole world is against me. Well, it's, it's an interesting aspect when you don't feel like you love yourself, and you, and you feel like you're unlovable, and you feel like all of those people or all of those experiences are, are out to get you. The conundrum really is, is that the first part of this belief creates the second part of this belief. When I don't choose to love myself or don't choose to step into my power and say, no, I do love myself, what's going to happen is the universe, God, this experience that we're living in, is going to show us unlovable things because our belief is unlovable, is that we are unlovable. And how do I love myself? Now, let's talk about that aspect of it. That belief comes from past experience. That belief comes from someone in your life telling them that you that you're not lovable and telling you that you're a person that's unworthy or, or, or guilty. A lot of people who have religious backgrounds have this, this exact issue because they're told from birth that they're sinners. They're told that they're, they should repent for all the terrible things they've done, even if they haven't. They're told that, that they'll never make it to heaven because they're, they're guilty of killing Jesus. You know, there, there, there's religion that will, will often create this exact experience. So will experiences with parents and, and you know, parents who have, who have their own struggles in life will, will, will make themselves feel powerful by becoming overlords of their children rather than parents. And the reason they do that is not because of 
they, they have good parenting skills, but because they didn't have good parents uh, or, or experiences behind them that made them feel like the only way they can feel like they have power is to lord it over others, which makes that, that person that they've lorded over feel like they're not worthy, feel like they're unable to, feel like they can't love themselves because the people who were supposed to love them unconditionally didn't. They had conditions. But there comes a moment in your life where you have to say, that part of my life is over. And I am living a joyful life, expressing my authentic self, and I am worthy of love because I am love itself. And you step into that role of saying, okay, I'm putting the past down. Now, that for many people, that's easier said than done. But what you're living in now with this, how do I love myself when the whole world seems against me? What you're living in now is, is a product of subconscious belief from past experiences. So what you do is you literally say, I am only feeling and living a loving life. And when you don't feel that way, you say, no, I'm not doing that. I am feeling and living a loving life. And what happens is you create the habit of living a, a loving life, a, a feeling worthy of love, right? You create it as a habit because the subconscious mind is nothing but a habit. It's habitual belief. And when you break past that habitual belief and you change it, you've got to come back to this space. Now, science clearly states somewhere between 21 and 60 days of repetitive action creates habit. So you have to create the new habit of belief, you have to break that cycle of believing you're not lovable. You have to break that cycle of believing the world is out to get you by simply just declaring, no, this is not happening anymore. I am doing this. And never giving your power up again to your past. Because when you do that, you're, you're not living your life. You're living someone else's. Someone else has told you this, so you're living their, their belief about who you are. Your beliefs about who you are are chosen. They're chosen beliefs, and you have the ability to choose new in every moment of every day. And when you choose to do that, what happens is you start to see results of that. And as you start to see results of that, your faith will grow. As your faith grows, your, your experiences will become exponentially better because you have chosen to create. You've chosen to step into your divinity and be the lovable and loving person that you are. And if the people who aren't going to be able to support that, the people who are going to always see you as less than, are going to self-eject. They're going to go away from your life, or they're going to adapt and see you as something new and be so excited or not about who you are and what you're doing. But you're only responsible for your life experience. You're not ex responsible for somebody else's life ex experiences, and you're definitely not responsible for somebody else's choice of putting you down and knocking you down to make you feel less than. That's their choice, not yours. You choose to live a loving, joyful life and love yourself fully. Go out there into the world and just be that expression of love. And then next thing you know, the world is no longer out to get you because now the world is reflecting that loving life back to you. And that's how you break this cycle of how do I love myself when the world's out to get me. The world's only out to get you because you've chosen to succumb to not loving yourself. And that's no, that wasn't yours. That was from your past experiences. Yesterday is done. Tomorrow is possibility. Today is the moment of creation. I am. It's not I was or I will be. Get very present. Get very fearless. Choose to be loving and to be loved. And live only that. And when something comes up that seems contrary, negate it, redirect it back to that belief that you've chosen and watch it surround your life. And that's my thought on this. You guys have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye.